Hello everybody and welcome to the Train Sim World 5 Dev Diaries video series. Our opportunity to lift the hood on development and tell you a little bit about how we have made Train Sim World 5. Train Sim World 5 is coming to you on September 17th, 2024 and we are beyond excited. Today we're going to be focusing heavily on innovation, how we're keeping up with the fast paced world of modern trains and how we're providing a more accessible experience for all our players. We'll be checking in with the development teams on all things trains, how we've made them and how we've recreated some of your most requested local locomotives in Train Sim World 5. With the highly coveted Pendolino coming to Train Sim World 5, let's lean into Dev Diary number 3. With Train Sim World 5 we have a whole new list of trains. Pendolino, the Flix train, the ICT and the 350. We've really opened the throttle with new trains. And the routes are really going to make those stand out. Coming with Train Sim Mod 5, between the standard and deluxe editions, you've got two particularly standout trains. You've got the ICET, which is the tilting ICE train, which is magnificent, uh, really good to see, and really, really sleek to drive. And then for the UK, you've got the Pendolino, also a tilting train bit of a theme here. These two trains have probably been some of the most sought after trains that we've had requests for from players so it's really good to get them in the game. Obviously tilting trains are what they tilt so you know it's a, it's a new bit of physics we have to think about. What the engineering team do is we write the code underneath, uh, we make Unreal Engine 4 work as a train game because it was never really built originally to run train games. We work on the underlying gameplay features that the rest of the setup team and things can set up the trains with. We also look after things like Simigraph, our physics system that makes the train move and you know pretty much does everything physics wise for all of our trains. What are physics and setup teams have been doing is they've been looking at the trains and trying to recreate that one-to-one -one in the game. It's something slightly different and this is the first IC train that we've actually been out to Germany for to record whereas before we've you know, used Mike Goltz as our kind of contact out there so this is the first time that we've been able to personally ourselves get audio for it. A lot of our audio is very much based on how the simulation works. Our audio is tied into the, the core element of our train sim. If the simulation is not quite there, then the audio won't be quite there. So we need to work very closely with simulation to make sure that the simulation is doing what we need it to do to make sure the audio is correct. The Pendolino is so iconic because it is unique. There is no other Class 390 in the UK used by any other operator. They've got the, the sleek lines, they look so impressive. There really aren't tilting trains in the UK, it's, it's kind of on its own in that front. We have a history of, of trialling tilting technology in the UK, and the Pendolino has kind of been one of the most successful. Really fun to ride, really fun to ride in the cab, especially around some of the curves on the West Coast mainline, and it's really fun to drive. To add a iconic, you know, bit of British engineering is actually quite exciting. Not only because it's been a nice challenge for the team, but also it's been one of the most requested things from the player base. You know, it is just that uniqueness, I think, that makes it so special. It's an exceptional train, and it's just so good to be able to have it as part of the uh, Train Sim World Deluxe package. For me, accessibility has always been a really important factor to consider. I speak to a lot of people in the community and I'm always surprised hearing stories about how close the game is for them to being really playable and really fun. If it weren't for something really simple, something that we can simply fix. And that for me is one of the key things I want to try and bring. We try and do an improvement in each release or bring some improvements which try and make the game more accessible and more approachable to a wider audience. With more and more modern trains relying more and more extensively on these in-cab screens, it's becoming more difficult to use them, particularly if you've got poor eyesight, if you've got more difficulty controlling with fine motor control how you actually move the joystick, move the screen. It's becoming a locked out feature. So it became important when we started thinking about this, looking at some of the trains that we've done ourselves recently, thinking we need to solve this problem. We've got actually people on the beta team who are there because um, they, uh, they can give us really valuable feedback from their own experiences about using these and they find it quite hard. So we've improved digital space screens, so 
players will be able to zoom in full screen into these screens and be able to navigate them easier with keyboards and with controllers. I think one of the biggest problems with implementing this feature is that being able to change cameras to be able to zoom in and zoom out because it's not going to be the person, it's going to be a separate camera so you have to make sure you don't get locked in or get stuck on the way out of coming into it. And now you can quickly do what you want, pull the screen back to where it was and get back on quickly with focusing on where you're going. It really improves the usability of that feature. As I've been new, this is my first release. Working with the team and working with everybody involved has been really helpful and really fun. I think everyone really enjoys what they do and wants to do the best they can. Particularly want to shout out the, uh, the development teams, um, the engineering team, the audio team, the environment teams who uh, tried all sorts of new processes to really step up the quality uh, on the on the routes and hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll recognise that. But also the production team and the development management team, uh, which are the glue that keep everything together uh, and keep things going where they're supposed to be. In Train Sim World 5, the things I'm most looking forward to players experiencing include like guard mode and also Pendolino and also just the core updates we've done across the board. Like we've done actually done quite a bit. It may not be obvious from the start, but actually that new core, we've fixed bugs, we've, we've done some improvements and I think what we're giving you this time is a really nice package. I'm most looking forward to people enjoying the new features that we have that they've not seen that are coming directly into Train Sim World 5. Flash travel and route hopping, and the new updates to photo mode. We've got more people involved, more creative minds involved, and you know, really driving audio to the next level. Uh, and hopefully our players will see that with TFW5. And that's a wrap on Train Sim World 5's Dev Diary series. We hope you've enjoyed it. Next stop, Train Sim World 5 on September 17th. But early access is only a matter of days away on September 12th. If you want to get in before everybody else, you are going to need the deluxe or the special editions which are available to pre-order now. We hope you've enjoyed an insight as to what goes on behind the scenes at Dovetail Games and roll on September 17th. We'll see you there.